section the top off at the natural parting you can show you. so I usually like to start with a longer one like a four just to see what's going on underneath the hair and go straight up with the head and not rounding it as the hair the head round what's going on underneath so you can start your fade with cleaner lines and as you can see I'm leaving all this area long so I could still have control over the shape so since I'm doing the one and he has a beard, I'm gonna start here. So then I could blend the beard into the hair cut. So what you wanna do is develop a clean line with the one, making sure you're not undercutting the hair and you're seeing the line. Developing clean shapes is really important so you can save them easily. And as you see this triangle on the face. Usually where I'm doing a one, I like to go right as a triangle on the bottom of it. So, and also above the ear, the face is usually about an inch, an inch and a half. But if you go too low, it's just gonna be hard to fade it. If you go too high, then you will throw the shape. I'm gonna fade this into the beard before I continue. And then a 1A, because that's what I'm about the one. And I like using the after metal clippers, because they're the most consistent and precise. Before I continue with the fade, I could just fade this with a 1A, but instead of doing that and perhaps going too high, I'm gonna do the two to the mark of it getting darker maybe till there and then i'll have this space to fade from the one to the one a to the one and a half to the two so you have more control over how much space you have to fade so this is the one i'm doing the two to where i want the actual space to start which is here at the triangle at the point of the triangle. Of course, if people have uneven head shape, you have to assess that before the haircut and you have to keep the fade lower or higher if they have a really square head. So that's the two. If you notice that your line is uneven, go in again with the wand and straighten it out before continuing. And since this looks good, I'm gonna, now as you can see, there's two lines. There's the two 
and there's the one. So I have the space between the one and two to fade into the two. So I'm gonna grab the one and a half now and go a little bit under the two and then the one A a little bit below that to erase this line. Working with this low flip, it's just to sometimes stretch the chin to get the blend. And it's also good to check your fade in the mirror to see if it's erasing. If you see more than two lines, you need to go in and erase them. So right now I should only be seeing one weight line, which is from the two and the higher, which is looking good. I'm going to do the natural back. I'm going to do the one I'm grabbing the triple zero. I'm going an inch past the hairline. The hairline's there. If the hairline is uneven, just make up your own hairline how it should be. It should be like this. Even if it goes to here, it should be about an inch below the ear. So this is just normal. I'm just going to see zero like this. And I'm just doing the one again. Just here. So now all this hair underneath will be cut with the and the outliner without creating the line. So I'm not going like this. I'm just softly getting rid of the neck hair. Always when working, you want your canvas to be clean. You see everything perfectly, so brush them off or go dry. Right, so now what we did before was the four. One, one and one and a half, two. So now we know we have either higher to go five or three, three and a half to blend and find the blend. So now I'm just gonna go with the five first. I always like to start with the higher. And I'm going again straight up without curving it in. Develop a flat shape for for men or for classic men haircut. You want to develop a flat shape that is square, not round. Three and a half can go straight up. And I'm taking my shape from looking at it at the front. And as you can see here, it's still the bump from the front that you need to flatten. So I'm just going over the line that I want to blend and cast it. And if it's not blending perfectly, because this one should um, already blend it perfectly, I will still go in with the two. So basically right now what I'm doing is going with the three, going about an inch past that line that I want to blend to give my me space for the next flipper down to blend it. And so if this one doesn't blend it, the one lower is going to blend it. And if that one's going to blend it, then something else is going to blend it. Now I'm going with the two. In this fading shape you want to go, it doesn't have to be so square and so straight. You could have some kind of a 
a little bit of an angle. So that's just up to your creative. So before continuing to the top, I want to make sure these sides are done. So right now I'm just going to put a little bit of a salt spray in. This part I like to do with the thinning shears. So if you're looking at the shape from the front, this kind of goes out a little bit. So I'm bringing this in just to square off the shape. You can go pretty high up and even curve a little bit. And then the final blend is really important. I like to just skip that to get it already looks good. But you can perfect it with just doing all the clips over again. So it's six, five, four, three, two, a little bit perfectly blended. Uh, since it's, the blend is almost finished, I'll work with one side at a time and then back. And then making room for your blend. So if you see a line, don't go in with the short one, go in with a longer one, like a number two, past it about an inch, and then go in with one and a half, and lower it to try to blend it. So for this haircut, we're not going to cut it with a part, because this is going to be worn slightly to one direction and slightly disconnected. So after you dry it, it just gives it a better texture. If this was really long hair, what I would do, you're combing it slightly back and cutting it with a square shape like any other haircut, but without connecting it to the sides. So I think we're, this hair is not that long, I'm not cutting that much off. So I'm just going through the haircut just to see if it was cut it was a balance last time and just cleaning it up. So this is how you're cutting it. This is to the side, straight out. I want to keep that disconnect so I'm not cutting that much. If this was long hair, I would bring it in to a little bit past the guide of the side. The wet cut shouldn't take more than two minutes because you're going to do most of the cutting when it's dry. Gauge the length based on ears to the ears or you know to the skin or to the eyebrows on the front or longer to the nose. So we're leaving this pretty long. So I'm just cutting the ends a little bit. Also, I leave this whole cowlick area till the end. So comb it how it lays naturally. Like this. And then when you're cutting the top, leave this. Just cut the hair on the top of the head. So straight up. Your guide is your side, so you just trim. Straight across. where the natural part is. Even though it's not going to be one part, it's still going out, so you go back like that. So I see it goes this way. And the way I know is because the cowlick in the back goes this way. I'm going to how it's going to be worn.
Normally I would go over the whole haircut with the new scissors and add texture. If the hair folds too much on the sides, just grab it. Like at this section. Don't grab the same section too many times. So you're just grabbing this section, that section, that section. So you know what you're doing. You're not doing random texture. Basically grabbing this piece, this piece, that piece. And taking a little chunk out of it. Close dry it with the cold air. Make sure when you dry it with the warm air, it's fully dry. And the way I directed this is that way and then this way. So it's not all straight back. Just gives it a better shape if you go slightly towards it. Okay, so now check your fade again. Turn them. See if it's perfect. If it isn't, go back. Perfecting the haircut. I do the natural wax. From Vaughn. It's very light and it's very good. Alright, so I'm adding about this amount. And I never like to put product on the front first, then it becomes too heavy in the front, so I always go in the back and kind of break it in the direction that you want it. So, what you want to do is flatten this area here and put the front over it this is the shape and there you are oh yeah no i love it yeah it's good